From scoring off screens to shooting threes to driving to the rim, there is no answer from the Quinnipiac women's basketball team against Fairfield's Lou Lopez Senecal today. She torched the Bobcats for 26 points, and while Quinnipiac threw everything they could at her, it was almost like she was all alone on the court. It was a senior day unlike any other for the Bobcats as the doors were closed for fans, friends, or family to get inside and watch the team play. These dugouts had been vacant for the Quinnipiac baseball team as their weekend series was canceled because of COVID-19. The senior season may almost be done here for Sheen High School football, but the team still has its first playoff game coming up against Woodland Regional right here where the snow lies. And while five of six seniors are now graduating, they know they can sit back and relax in the stands as the future is still bright for this Quinnipiac women's volleyball team. Here's on the Quinnipiac women's basketball team are living alongside the returning players right here on the York Hill campus. This new living situation has developed a stronger relationship on the team before they even step onto the court. The aftermath of senior day, you see players in the team talking to Olga Zampati, who's on a Zoom card. She couldn't be here, but they're still here to celebrate her alongside five other seniors on this Quinnipiac women's volleyball team who have been a lot through this program. It's so surreal. Honestly, I feel like it was yesterday I was a freshman. I blinked my eyes and now I'm, I'm the grandma walking down and everyone's like, okay, well, this is it. Like, this is your last, your last hurrah. This morning, they decorated the locker room. They, I don't know if you saw these, like the, the countries and everything. It was a celebration from start to finish. <laughs> a win in four sets against Siena was followed by hugs, gifts, Teletubbies, and a pizza party to wrap it all up. Coach Kyle likes to keep things fun and light, and we like to, we like to party as a, as a group here. The six Quinnipiac seniors did not join the Bobcats at the same time. Georgia Salepi, Olga Zampati, and Nicole Legg were all transfers. Maggie Baker, Daniela Balsano, and Nicole Migliozzi were recruited to join Quinnipiac in 2018. Despite starting in separate places, the team still says, The whole senior class is so close. Head coach Kyle Robinson enjoyed seeing the smiles of his players, and he also noticed some tears of joy. I like that they're leaving sad because they still want more of the experience, you know, which is how it should be. The party still goes on for two more regular season games on the road before the MAC tournament begins November 19th. Reporting for Q30 Sports, I'm Eric Kerr. And with Quinnipiac now eliminated, the MAC championship led to a battle of number one against number two, that being Fairfield against Ryder. But oddly enough, it was the number four seed, Canisius, that gave the top seed, Fairfield, a tougher game in the MAC semifinals. The Bobcats look to continue their winning ways in men's ice hockey the next night at home against the St. Lawrence Saints. One, two, uh, skip a few, five wins out of their last six, but couldn't even make this six games out of seven. You see in our screen, they did just that. Corinne Schroeder was awarded the ECAC Hockey Goalie of the Week after shutting out against uh, number five Colgate in the 4 0 win with a 38 save performance. This game was one of three shutouts already on the season for Schroeder. And on the left side of your screen, Myla Bad was the ECAC Hockey Rookie of the Week for the first time in her career. Well, Jack, two minutes have passed, which means that Sports Pause is right back. We now shift from the ice to the court, starting with Quinnipiac men's basketball. And Quinnipiac then went back on the road for the second time this season against New Hampshire. Now this matchup is where the three game winning streak would end for the Bobcats as they would go on to lose to that Wildcats team 84 to 69. Story of the game for Quinnipiac was their offense. A team that normally makes 44% of their shots while shooting 33% from beyond the arc shot lower percentages in both categories. Way to correct yourself there, but you didn't correct yourself earlier because it's not Sports Center top plays. This is it's Sports, Sports Pause, Pause top, top plays. plays coming right up. Here we go. What do you want to take? You want to take I, I, I'll just start off with number five. You're going to follow in with yeah, number Yeah, you may as well because sense? you messed up. You I did. Yeah, I need plays. to redeem myself a little bit. So here we go. Quinnipiac men's basketball has their first MAC matchup of the season against St. Peter's last Friday night. We head straight to the second half. Fair warning, if you're looking for a highlight with top plays, you're not going to get it in this one. Obviously, Kevin Marfo not liking he's getting dogged by Indefo, so another foul on Quinnipiac right there, seeing the theme. Marfo tumbling to the ground after that. St. Peter's has numbers. Here they go now. Three for Edert and another Quinnipiac foul, question mark? We got to look at that again. Marfo on the other end getting tangled up. No foul call there. 
but I guess Doug Eater got fouled by the air, which prompted the official to blow the whistle. Jacob Bergoni saying, come on, man, what else can I do? Crowd now erupts into booze. Kevin Marfo explaining his case, saying, he pulled me, ref, he pulled me. But somehow, someway, Quinnipiac still in this game. They go on a 10-0 run with the help of this big offensive rebound from Kevin Marfo. Gets fouled by Casey and Defo. Goes to the line, and Defo's not happy. You can see him shaking his head at the officials here. Officials trying to decide what is a foul, what's not a foul. They're talking about it. They're not too sure. Mac volleyball action. Kanisha start its weekend trip to Connecticut at Quinnipiac this afternoon. Last time these two played, the Bobcats took down the Golden Griffins in four sets at Buffalo. What's in store for the rematch? Let's find out. Set number one. Get familiar with the name Lexi Morris. She's a middle blocker who you see laughing on your screen because she knows she's going to have a big day. First play of the game, first kill of the game. Bobcats now up 2-0 in set one. That's her second kill of the day. Canisius now down 2-1. Set four, hey, remember when I said this was the first kill of the game at set one for Lexi Morse? Well, the score is now 24-21 Quinnipiac. Oh, wait, nope, not just yet. Game's not over yet, but there's Lexi Morris with the block touch. Oh, Chloe Kahanui, feed her back. She does. That's the dagger. That is the game. Your final in Hamden, 3-1 Quinnipiac.